back and this is the chip master and this is a uh, desktop uh, motherboard analysis timing for the intel series uh, 100 hm170 we have hm176 which matches the sky lake cpu all right as you can see on the black diagram here we're going to talk about the the standard timing which is a demo video as usual all right and uh all videos will be ready it takes a lot it's a lot of videos over 500 plus videos all right so uh so this class is on my desktop which is the first desktop motherboard demo training video all right and uh we're gonna look at the lot diagram here of the design of this or the architecture of this motherboard all right as i also have an image that i've um taken of the motherboard and this is it as you can see all right this is the gigabyte uh ga h170n hyphen wi-fi as you can see there there's a wi-fi that's integrated with two antennas that can be connected at the back right of the io port and this is the wi-fi card which is a pci express as you can see that is why it's called the wi-fi set as i said comes with its wi-fi card that is integrated on the board right which is dedicated there all right so uh and this is the chipset hm170 let me see if i can zoom in to the uh, i'm able to see the board number uh, this is a sr3 f0 i believe and uh, this is the intel series 100 series cpu and this is the skylake cpu socket right uh, all right and uh, as i said this is uh this is an intel lga which is a let socket 1151 and this is lga which stands for land grid array right before you had pins right on the cpu instead the pins are on the socket so these are all on the socket so it's called a lga which is a land grid array right and it's also a ddr4 uh them slots here two of them say ddr4 one ddr4 two and uh it's a nice typical motherboard all right so back to the lock diagram and uh, we have your skylake cpu right and this is intel series set six generation sixth generation and seventh generation cpu are the same the timing is the same right so the, the cpus can be interchanged so you can insert a seventh gen cable lake cpu inside of this socket and it will work because the timing are the same okay so let's look at the black diagram as you can see we have here a pci express 16 right 16 but times right about speed and it's uh used for communicating with the graphics card right we also have uh a hdmi 2 right and we have two hdmi ports we also have a dvid right digital visual interface and uh so it this is the cpu and it manages it has an integrated graphics card uh the graphics <coughs> card inside so if you want to expand the graphics or to accelerate your graphics then you plug it into a pci express and then you can have smart switching so this is basically as i said before if once you are playing a game right and the cpu cannot handle the amount of graphics that it's going to need it's going to do a smart switching or intelligent switching and switch to the graphics card so it's constantly switching 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 between each right you also can modify the bios by doing certain overclocking and so forth for um, allowing it to directly or putting directly from your pci express card right but normally if there's no pci express card then it will use integrated graphics right and it will send the display information through the hdmi right so this board doesn't support the this the integrated graphics doesn't support the output of vga right because it carries for a laptop which is called the edp which is the embedded display port which output all display information but this is a laptop a desktop motherboard so it will just use the dvi right and or hdmi right which is a high definition multimeter in, uh, interface which is required high frequency switching um transferring of data all right so the, there's an integrated graphics card inside of the intel skylake cpu all right as you can see i am vp8 this is the intel mobile voltage position in 8 version right which is allowing you to uh which have the turbo boost technology which dynamically adjusts the cpu output voltages depending on the state of the cpu so if it's in idle mode the cpu will drop its frequency and the voltage will drop right you have a signal which is called slp uh, s0 which is used to put the cpu into an idle state when the computer is not in use right so i am vp8 have that uh functionality right so let's type in uh slp uh, underscore s0 right 
see as you can see slps zero right it is not used on this board but on the coffee lake and the 10th and 11th and the 12th generation the slps zero is used to drop the frequency and put this cpu into an idle state right so this is also used to drop the cpu the power consumption then in most cases of the computer right so slps zero which is implemented in imvp8 and that is why imvp is there to uh dynamically adjust the cpu core voltage okay and let's go back to the block diagram all right next over here we have uh channel a we have channel b ddr4 dim one and we have another dim one which is i told before it's two dim slots on the motherboard and it's ddr4 bus right so the ddr4 bus which is a data bus which is basically transmitting high frequency between the cpu there is a memory controller in the cpu and this is communicating with the ram right so this is two channels as you can see ddr4 right and uh we'll get more to that in ram desktop ram demo video we also have a fdi bus and we have a dmi bus anybody can tell me what's the difference between these two buses all right so the fdi bus only transferred digital output uh display information right so display output is coming through the dmi bus if there's a vga let's see if there's a vga right if there's a vga connector then it will output to the vga let's see we have sata m.2 m.2 spi dual bios this means that the bios is shared it's the two biases are exactly the same they have the same data in it so it's a dual bios meaning that it's 64 meg it's an 8 megabyte bios chip right it's a 25 25 ql 64 which is an 8 megabyte uh so we don't see any vga there's no vga on this board so we have here uh usb 3.0 and usb 2.0 we have a card reader also powered by the usb 3.0 we have a type c port also we also have an intel lan right phy means it's a lan phy intel lan right and we also have another phy here which is using the pci express one lane generation third gen and this is uh another security information i'm not sure what this means i'll get to that uh, in another video uh i don't see any vj so uh so the, the fdi stands for flexible display interface if there was a, a vga connection here what will happen is that the cpu will send the display information to the pch and the pch will then convert that to analog signal so the cpu doesn't support the, the output of digital sig analog signals so what will happen is that in order to get the analog output because vga as you know vga is analog output right right these are di these are digital output interfaces so these information are passed high frequency vga is a lower frequency so the cpu doesn't support the output of this cpu doesn't support the output of uh, uh vga which is analog frequency and in order to get the analog you have to pass it through the fdi bus then the pch will convert that to analog output but as i but based on this uh, black diagram there's no vga right so this display information is going to the pch and it is uh on CPU is very weird. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We also have the DMI bus, which stands for Direct Media Interface. So this passes uh, data information, such as all information, requests, interruptions, all of those information are passed to the DMI bus. Right after the CPU gets a reset signal, it will go through the DMI bus to read the BIOS right and it will read the bios through the dmi bus and the information is going to pass back to the cpu to tell the cpu that the bios is read correctly and the data is okay and it can start the initialization process so this is the part of the dmi bus all this information have to be passed to the dmi bus whether it's from the sata right who needs to be requested right audio all of them have to pass through the dmi bus in order to request at and an, an, to get a request or an interrupt so the cpu can access right so all that information is passed through the dmi bus right if the dmi bus is abnormal right it's broken or disconnection then you'll have no display right no display right so if the dmi bus is broken or there's corrosion or you cannot see the dmi bus you cannot test it because it's done internally it's in the uh the middle or the trial layer in the other layers of the board so it's very difficult to test it so all we test the dmi bus we use a dummy load uh, CPU socket to plug into the socket and it and we can measure the resistance of the DMI bus Right, so the DMI bus have a resistance of roughly about 380 ohms, right? So if you measure the multi your multimeter 
right so the dmi bus uh is a very important bus as i said before if this bus is not working then you'll have definitely no display all right and uh so that's it for the fdr and the dmi bus so we also have here pci express for as i said we looked at it and it's for the intel all right this is for the intel LAN. uh the pci the, this board doesn't have a pci slot based on what i'm seeing let's look at the picture all right you don't have a pci only a pci express slot all right this is a pci express slot here Right, this is a PCI Express slot, right? So there's no PCI slot. Okay, so there's, there's no PCI slot. All right, so we have here a tool. Uh, pa, this is a for Intel. I said Intel LAN, two Intel LAN. So this board supports the the Deep Sleep most likely and the IAMT Intel Active Management Technology. We also have here USB 2.0, USB 3.0 and type c which is all pass through usb 2.0 and usb 3.0 bus right there's another one here right for the front panel and the rear panel right so front panel we have a usb 3.0 and a usb 2.0 on the front panel right over down here sorry we have the audio bus which is azalea right which is passing all the audio information which is about see the audio bus which is the data sync output data sync input uh the clock and the reset right all that is the date the sound bus sound card bus if any fault with another, any of those lines on the sound card bus definitely no audio right the audio uh, codec is a real tech alc 1150 which is storing the drivers and it is the output into the ports as you can see we have a line out we have a line in or a front audio we have a mic in or a cd in right we have a so subwoofer okay so this board supports a subwoofer where the output of uh you can uh amplify the sound so it has an internal this uh the ic of an internal amplifier that is going to amplify to the sound card let's take a look as you can see this is the sound card uh pin out uh, the sound card uh panel sorry as you can see and um the sound card is not, I'm not seeing it, maybe it's on the next side. I'll have to get the next side picture. Give me a minute. Hold on. Okay, yes, yeah, so here's the sound card, the real tech, as you can see, and it is uh, connecting to the, the audio panel here to output the different audio and microphone output. All right. Uh, we also, sorry, we also have the LPC bus, which is connected to the IO. Right, for a desktop motherboard it's not an ec it's called an io because it doesn't carry a bios so the pins are not uh the pins are defined right so they are already defined by the manufacturer for a laptop the ec bios has no definition because it doesn't know what its purpose is going to do for each pin because that, that aspect this ec can go on um can be installed on another laptop and the pins do a different function right so each laptop for the laptop carries uh, a battery and it needs to be charged and it needs certain monitoring and stuff so it has to be done through the ec and the ec uh basically handles uh, the, the the function of an ec on a laptop then in most cases is more powerful than of a desktop so this is why it's called an io and it's not an ec right so it's called the input output and it's connected to the lpc bus right and this is a it8628 right as you can see it 8628e and this is a io as you can see there is no bios it doesn't carry an integrated bios so you can just take this ec off order another one put it on you don't have to worry about programming right it's uh, the pins are already defined by the manufacturer so most likely you can find a data sheet for this ec and the pins are they tell you the exact definition of each function of each pin all right we have here on um, uh io ports right come on a keyboard ps2 so the EC is uh, connected to the, is managing the IO ports for the keyboard and the mouse. We also have a front panel system fan, right? Front panel connection for the fan. So the EC is monitoring the fan, right? And the system fan, right? So the fan, all the fan, the fan for cooling and the temperature is being monitored through the IO. So the IO is monitoring the temperature and the fan rotation, uh, detection and control of the rotation of the fan, right? We also have a SPI bus. As I said before, there are two BIOS. They are mirrored. They have the same data in them, right? So as you can see here, they are. 
they are the two biases right and they are the same size they are exactly 64 megabytes 64 which is 8 megabytes 64 so it's a 25 by 64 on both of them and they're exactly they have the same data and they are mirrored right and this is a beautiful design so if one is corrupted then it can read the other one and still access on the computer will still work right if both of them are corrupted then definitely no display or power down okay we also have the m.2 we have a m.2 key slot right sata bus and uh we have m and we have e all right so uh let me get the back image all right so here it is we have a m.2 one another m.2 here as you can see all right here's one on the back so this board support m.2 all right and you can also plug a let's see for the other one it says two keys we have uh, SATA ports right here the other one oh it's this one but it's for Wi-Fi this is another m.2 but it's for Wi-Fi this is not m.2 sorry let me see the back carefully so we have one here one m.2 here and uh the other hold on let's go back to the black diagram so we have m.2 key slot we have m.2 e m.2 m key slot m.2 e key slot oh and a sata express slot so this is the wi-fi so uh so this one is where the sat the sata so you can use an m sata pci express m sata and this one is m.2 so this is where the Wi-Fi is integrated and it's a 4-bit speed, right? And uh, this one is for where you see the Wi-Fi here. This one, this is this. So the Wi-Fi, SATA Express. Right, SATA Express, okay? So this is basically the architecture of the motherboard and the features and what it, uh, the spec specifications of the motherboard and what it can do. All right, so, uh, we're going to go to the timing analysis now for this motherboard and uh, as you know the timing is done off this, the chipset right and it is done off the chipset which is the this chip which is the HM170 and this is matching the Intel series 6 or 7th generation CPU right and uh, as you can see we have the socket here which is a uh, 1150 all right i also have this the documentation here from uh slot one we have pentium 3 celeron right 1999 just release we have socket 370 which released in 2000 pentium 3 celeron then we have socket 423 which is uh released also in 2000 which is a pentium 4 which was a very hot cpu in that time we also have socket 478 which was also the pentium 4 enhanced uh we have socket 1175 for the pentium 4 right and uh we have socket uh, 1366 2008 the core i7 all right uh and you know as you can see these are all the sockets and we are only looking at now which is the the lga 1150 one which is the core i3 i5 i7 6 and 7 generation this is what we are doing now it was released in 2015 right so these boards come the i3 i5 i7 we also have here the fifth generation which is the socket 1150 which was released in 2013 with the core i3 i5 and i7 fourth and fifth generation cpus all right so we're going to go to the timing and uh we're going to the timing as i said before is based off the cp the south bridge or the pch rather which has both cp south bridge and north bridge functions inside and uh the timing is based off this this uh chipset as you know I have already given a demo video on the Intel Series 6 single ULT uh, standard timing. The timing is similar, it's slightly different. So you can go back to that uh, demo video on the Intel Series 6 generation and 7 generation uh, demo video standard timing where I explained up to the path of uh, RCM reset I believe and uh, that's the same timing. So we're going to go for the same uh, documentation. All right and uh i have it right here All right so we're going to go by this timing as i said before you can use a single uh ult to to for the same timing for this uh intel series hm170 pch right so as you can see on the first timing here of the timing we have this let's uh 
we have the source which is the board we have destination and we have the signal name right so from board to cpu we have vcc rtc and the rest of the signals go all the way down this is the standard timing so it never changes regardless if it's a desktop or a laptop right it goes by the chipset so the time is based on the chipset not on the motherboard which is hp dell or quanta or wistron or uh, pegatron or it's a compound the timing is based off the intel chipset right the timing analysis of the board is different for each manufacturer for each motherboard right so that's you should have in mind so don't get mixed up okay all right so let's go for the standard timing so we have first we have vcc rtc all right and uh let's go over to the schematic all right so we have vcc rtc all right as i said before the name is the same as you can see all right so we have vcc rtc and we have dcp rtc all right dcp rtc is basically an internal generation of the voltage or confirmation that you can measure at this capacitor most times it's not installed right as you can see it has an x indicating that this component is not there just the pad so you can measure here you will get 1.05 volts once you get 1.05 volts here then you know that the internal suspend regulator is generated inside of the pch and it's okay if this voltage is not there then definitely we get no trigger because the rtc section is not provided or the power is not provided to the pch to power the rtc well right so that's why that is the purpose of dcp rtc but our main focus is vcc rtc and our external name is n underscore rtc underscore vdd so let's copy this signal and see where it's coming from right this is the first step you should do when you're checking any motherboard if it's a no power right or no trigger especially for no trigger so you plug in the charger you get the charging light or you get standby lights on the desktop or the motherboard and you're pressing the switch it's not responding and you check the, uh, the switch the switch is okay then the first step you should go is to check the signal right so let's go to vcc rtc and where is the power supply coming from the first second is coming from here we have a battery connection here as you can see all right and we have um the battery connection pin number one and pin number two one is part is connected to ground and another part is connected to the power right as you can see number one is the output in the three volts for as you know this is our coin cell battery and it's normally three volts coming from the battery so this three volts coming from the battery through this 1k resistor as you can see it's nrb right i also have the board view right so the board view is here that i've downloaded right and this is the board view so to find a specific resistor a specific capacitor we'll use the board view and i hope the board view will help us during the uh, the course of this uh explanation all right so we have nrb as you can see it's a 1k resistor right and it is going to a diode which is nd1 and this is the, the the model number the model name of the diode so you can google it you can do a google search for the data sheet on bas0 uh, 40 and uh, you'll see it's a sot23 right so it's a that <coughs> this is acting as a diode as a or a diode right so this is a or application of a diode if you notice the orientation of the diode that's the symbols right so the voltage can flow this way only right as you can see so both voltage so the voltage is two paths so one path is coming from here another path is coming from here and it is going to exit through the cathode of the diode as you can see this is the negative part and this is the positive part on the diode right and it is exiting to the negative part to provide power right now uh, as you can see here we have a path is coming called n underscore v bat right n underscore v bat another path it's called 3 3 dual underscore pch underscore bat all right as you can see it's coming from 3 volt dual and this is coming from another conversion page uh, uh six, six section after plugging in the power supply the power supply will go through a regulator and another step down regulator or another switching regulator to provide 3 volt dual right we'll get to that shortly right so as you can see first the, the battery that is on the motherboard the CMOS battery and it is coming through this first resistor and then it is going to provide power so this is before you plug in the power supply remember it's going to provide power for the through this 1k a 20k resistor here we also have a capacitor here right these capacitors are very important right so these capacitors if these capacitors are not there then the voltage will be very unstable 
right and that can cause power down because it's discharging the rtc section so if the rtc section on the motherboard is on the pch is discharging it can power the board right so if the, if there's a fault with this capacitor right or if it is removed it can cause fluctuation of the voltage right because when this voltage comes from the um the, the, the system to the smps which is a switch mode power supply and it's converted to three volts then it's going to pass through here and that voltage can also be fluctuating and cause problems and that can cause power down because if you measure the oscilloscope you will get a lot of fluctuation indicating that either the capacitor is leaky right it's break or it's broken down or it's removed right so after coming to this capacitor as you can see we have intruder oh, it's a one mega ohm resistor here and it is going to intruder we have another part going to the nrtc vdd that's where we're coming from and another part is going to nrtc reset right so these are the three paths of output power where it is going so the first one that we're looking at is the n underscore rtc vdd which is the power supply for the rtc well inside of the pch right so this is going to the the page that we're coming from which is to turn on the one rtc vcc right now this int vr me and these are uh removed from intel series uh in the pch of intel after the fifth gen after the fifth generation of cpu which is the, the haswell and the broadwell these voltages were cancelled out in intel series 6 right int instance uh, int underscore vrme and it stands for internal regulator voltage module enable so this voltage is 3.3 volts which is coming from the rtc section through another resistor right it normally a 300k resistor uh, it's difficult to draw with the mouse let me try all right let me clear all right so this is coming to a 300k resistor right and it is going to the rtc section to turn on the 1.05 volt suspend vrm regulator so it's an enable signal as you can see en at the end and it's going to turn on the 1.05 volt suspend regulator inside of the cpu inside of the pch a lock of this voltage if this voltage is not turned on then you have no trigger right you press you pressing the button on the power on the desktop or on the laptop well we're focusing on our desktop so let's talk about the desktop so when you press the power button on the desktop motherboard there's no respond because it's not getting the rtc vcc or the rtc power supply so this power supply along with this so you get the power we have reset and we have the enable and we have the clock right so this is an enable only so once this enable is coming 3.3 volts to the pch it's going to turn on the internal 1.05 volt suspend regulator you cannot see this but it's happening inside this is we cannot test this the only way we can test it is by typing the dcp underscore sus so dcp underscore sus that's like dcp sus sorry all right uh let's try dcp dcp first let's see what we get so we have dcp dsw this is for the deep sleep so this is our output test point this is for output only so it's one volt as you can see vcc 1.0 pch right so this board as i said before they they have all cancelled the int vrmen and the dsw vrmen so int int vrmen right it's all cancelled right if you go to an intel series fifth generation or fourth generation then you'll find the signals right so let's go back to vcc rtc Oh, the signal that I've copied before and RTCBDD. right so this is what it used but it's all cancelled so you don't need to search for these signals anymore in the sixth and the seventh generation upwards right let's continue searching for uh, our RTC so VCC RTC is powered by our CMOS battery here before plugging in the charger all right and it's going to this section and it is going to reset the art srtc reset soon get to that these are uh going to some cap coupling capacitors if these couple if these cap coupling capacitors are shorted due to corrosion or uh mildew definitely no trigger the rtc well is not powered and this is where we are coming from which is vcc rtc and this is uh case open okay so this vcc rtc is connected to the case open this signal 
it's connected to the case. So if the case is detected that it's open, what we'll do, it will pull down the signal low and then it, it indicates to the uh, the I.O. controller will send this signal to tell it that the case is open and it will pull the signal low to pull RTC low so you can't run the system. So this feature, not every motherboard carry this feature, only some motherboards with this feature will carry the case open. As you can see, this is the case open switch, right? You can force it. It's not installed. Yes, it's installed, sorry. And uh, you can also allow it to be forced by connecting a jumper and forcing it to ground and to shut down the system that the system cannot turn on because they don't want to turn on the system if the case is open. So this is not controlled by the I.O. I was wrong. That's my mistake. There's a jumper here. So if you open the case and you don't want power to the, turn, the computer to be turned on, if you have the power supply plugged in, you can use this as a protection and a jumper to what? Pull this low and what will happen to it will pull through this one mega ohm resistor, pull low and basically pull RTC VCC VCC RTC low so you won't accidentally press the button and this is a very good feature for the case open signal right and this is a timing uh, diagram here all right so that's basically it for the RTC section so VCC RTC is powered right and uh, it is coming from this section here this is the, uh, the power supply which is coming from this R diode right this is a germanium diode it has a 0 0.3 voltage drop right a germ a silicon diode has a voltage drop of about 0 0.4 right to 0 0.7 right and that's a lot of voltage drop so after coming through this resistor this diode sorry the voltage will drop to about 2.9 volts right so 3.3 volts on this side right and when you measure the anode and on the cathode side after conduction then you'll get 2.9 volts right so this is the the feature or characteristics of a germanium diode all right so let's go to the next timing after so vccc is uh complete as you can see there's a rising edge so it's powered then after the vcc is powered we have rtc rst hash and srtc rst hash these are the two reset signals so we have supply the vcc the rt circuit gets its supply now it's going to get two reset signal right and we have rtc reset and srtc reset all right let me get my point okay all right and uh all right so uh all right so as you can see here uh let me pause fix it okay so as you can see here we have a uh, from here right during the period of rising of this prime of the vcc rtc and to here when it stopped this is the reset part that is where it is active low because the ash sand indicates that this signal is active low so during the time of powering the rtc is getting its reset signal when the reset send when after this portion is complete then what will happen that eight this is a roughly about 18 milliseconds right within 18 milliseconds the rtc well should be reset and then the rising time of the, the complete of the um the vcc power supply then you will get the rising edge of this part indicates that it's a complete reset um reset signal right if the reset signal is delayed too long then there's a problem you cannot turn on the system right so you need to check your rtc delay circuit right so we're going to look at that circuit now right so let me go to the schematic all right so we're gonna type in our next signal and that is uh as you can see here we have uh rtc rst so let's go for that next signal rtc rst all right so here is it we have rtc rst and this is connected to the power supply name here right so the the, the standard name is the same but this name will change on this uh, schematic from schematic that uh, will vary right so we have to just copy here right copy and paste it and see the original source of this power supply where it's generated from all right so as you can see it's back to the same page that we were before right so this CMOS battery is also providing RTC reset right so it's coming through the diode again and then here it's coming to this resistor and a capacitor here and it is going to output nr under n 
hyphen RTC RST. As you can see before, I explained this in my uh, demo video on the Intel series single CPU standard timing. As you can see, we have a capacitor here, a resistor here, sorry, and a capacitor. And this is also known as a delay circuit, right? This is a delay circuit where the resistance is multiplied by the capacitance. As you can see, we have a 20K resistor, right? And we have a one microfarad capacitor multiplied by one and that's equal to one millisecond that's the sound of my parrot there he needs his breakfast so i'm gonna feed him shortly all right so that's one millisecond and this 20 milliseconds sorry <laughs> all right so 20 times one which is equal to 20 and that's 20 milliseconds so it takes 20 milliseconds so remember we said that the timing here on the timing Oh, go back on the timing here from here right from here to here must be within 18 milliseconds right so 20 milliseconds is the maximum time for the cpu rtc well the, the pch rtc will to be reset right so that is why they have a delay circuit so that they can uh reset the rtc section within a certain time so this voltage has to be limited at a certain time it cannot be rushed as the reset signal will become invalid Okay, so that's the purpose of the circuit, to delay the time so that the reset signal can be valid. Okay, all right, so that's the purpose of the RTC reset. So our next one, we have SRTC reset. Uh, so SRTC reset, which is the second reset signal. And this reset signal is to reset the ME portion inside of the PCH because the ME region is inside of the PCH and it's connected through the IMAT which is the Intel Active Management Tablet Technology that section also needs a reset signal all right so the, if you uh, go to the let's say the data sheet of the Intel series uh, PCH it's the same let me pause and get that okay so I heard it I've um, found the page and uh, as you can see here we have the PCH this is the PCH as you can see we have the different variable uh, section inside so the RTC crystal see is coming to turn on an internal oscillator that internal oscillator is going to send 32.76A to the RTC well to the SPI bus well and for the Intel ME so this art this SRTC reset signal so this clock is going to the RTC section so this Intel ME needs 32.768 clock and needs reset signal right in order to turn on the management engine which is inside of the PCH right so this is why the, th the S secondary SRTC reset is used and uh, this is why the SRTC is needed to turn on the reset for the Intel ME region or the ME module and it also needs a 32.768 kilohertz clock right uh, so the, let's go back to page 254 that uh, was uh, lurking around for the page right so as you can see we have the Intel ME we have the clocks we have the suspend this is where the internal suspend regulator enable voltages are coming to the INT VR ME and before right we have the SPI control which is going to communicate with the SPI bus and this is for the Intel ME requirements so the Intel ME is a platform level solution that utilizes multiple system components including the Intel ME is the general purpose controller that resides in the PCH. It operates in parallel to and is resource isolated from the whole CPU. So in other words, the ME region is like a, another subcomputer that is inside of the PCH that works independently without the CPU's permission. Right, so this is why it's called uh, the management engine. So it doesn't need the CPU or the host. So it's isolated from it. Right, so this is why it, uh, for the Intel, where it supports the Intel Active Management Technology, it says I A M T. All right, let's A M T. All right, all right, so it's Intel Active Management Technology. All right, and this is an independent, and this uh, so most computers doesn't support this. Only like the ThinkPads right and some of the pro books supports the active management technology for more robust uh remote computing from through network or through the LAN. it must have an intel LAN, right i don't want to go too much into this part so i'm just focusing on the timing so let's go back to the timing 
all right so that is why the srtc reset is there all right to reset the me region right srtc reset let me see if i can find that information in this data sheet srtc rsd Okay. SRTC must always be high in the rates of the SR. No, that's not the information. That's not it. Let's go down. Uh, oh, let me find RTC reset. I think I should RTC RST should be there with them together. Let me see. Signal description. Okay, RTC resets. Uh, no, RTC reset. This is information I've already taught that in the previous in the other classes. All right. So uh, it's not in the data sheet. Yeah. Okay. Here's the standard timing. So the, it doesn't have information for the SRTC reset. Very weird. I'm going through all of them. That's this. It's finished. <laughs> okay, SRTC reset high pins. Uh, I didn't find it in the previous video also. Okay, but as I said before, this uh, SRTC reset is used to reset the ME version, ME module inside of the PCH. Okay, all right. So the next signal we need to look for now is the clock, the 32.768 kilohertz. So we have the supply, we have the two resets. Now we have clock. So the 32.76 kilohertz signal is used to provide the clock frequency for the RTC well. If the clock is not oscillating, then they cannot trigger the board also. So the common standard name for all Intel is RTCX1. All right, RTCX1, as you can see here, and it is connected to NY1 and NY2. So, this is the standard name for the Intel series uh, PCH RTC clock name. The name doesn't change regardless if it's a laptop or a desktop or it's a Dell or a HP or whatever um, brand it is. All right, so let's copy this N underscore Y1 and see its whereabouts. It should take us to the crystal. And here we go. And this is the crystal 32.768. You should measure these two sides. You should get 32.768 crystal. And as you can see here, we have two capacitors here, which is a picofarad capacitor. All right, say NP 50 volts, which is a picofarad. Right, both of them are picofarad. The P stands for picofarad and they are white. Right, let's see if I can find them on the board here. Uh, here they are, two white capacitors, and this is a crystal. So you should put your multimeter here. Right, you should get roughly about 0 0.4 volts. Right, you can use your multimeter. Right, so right there on the on this part here, on this side you should get about 0 0.4 volts, and on this side you should get about 0 0.2 volts. Right, the voltage should not be same on both sides. Right, so if you measure here and you get voltage of 0 0.4 and you measure this side you get 0 0.2 volts that indicates that the crystal is working but i've seen that in some cases where i measured here and i didn't get any voltage i get voltage but i didn't get the wave right so you have to measure the waveform here with oscilloscope right so the waveform on this side is different from the waveform on this side so one waveform is uh here and the other one is a little bit smaller and with a lower frequency a lower uh curve right so uh so this uh n crystal is gonna supply 32.768 kilohertz frequency all right as you can see here which is for ground right and it is also connected to the crisp to the on the board here as you can see here which is used as a ground all right nh2 nx2 right and on the schematic here right it's nx2 hyphen sht and that's the um, the position number which is on uh, for the motherboard for this crystal right so if you measure here and you get voltage and no wave 
right first you re you replace the crystal right if you after replacing the crystal then you replace the resonance capacitor still no wave then the pch is faulty right you can also measure here the resistance in diode mode you should get roughly about 750 ohms right on both sides that's the normal value right so you're going to put your multimeter in diode mode and you're going to measure here right you're going to measure here measure this point and you measure this point you should get 750 on both sides and those are going to the pch right to provide the clock for the different modules the rtc the uh oops the rtc section and right, me section right and that is going to provide clock of 32.768 kilohertz frequency right and that is for the rtc section right so our rtc section this part here is complete right so this part should help us to once this part is complete if the last thing is the clock once the clock is there everything is okay right and that's the clock of 32.768 right let me see if i can find out the waveform so let's type waveforms i have supposed to have a 32.6 uh kilohertz waveform on my machine right so i have 27 megahertz here 32.768 uh rtc clock here it is and this is the clock that i've measured and i've um uh stored that image from the oscilloscope and uh that's uh i'm gonna show you all right uh it's not open i did <laughs> okay here is it so we have 32.9 kilohertz so you can see my time base is set to 200 millivolts my trigger levels is set to 560 millivolts and my time base is set to 10 microseconds and my edge type is set to rising edge as you can see the wave right so this this crystal is oscillating 32 kilohertz so you can say 32.768 kilohertz right so it's accurate enough okay all right so that concludes for that part the next part we have vcc dsw underscore 3p3 this is the deep sleep power supply right this is the deep sleep power supply when this signal is okay what will happen with that is that this signal is going to turn on the deep sleep and then the pch will internally pull up the switch button to turn on the system right once the deep sleep well is okay then the pch will internally what the inter oops the pch will internally why is it doing that <laughs> all right so the pch will internally send a a switch signal to the io on the well on the desktop motherboard on the laptop motherboard it's the same right so the pch will internally pull up the switch signal for the power button so it's p w r and that's our p w r b t n right which is the power button signal so once it does the, the vcc dsw or the deep sql power supply is okay then it will internally turn on the power button if you are checking a no trigger fault and you're not seeing the power button pull up here 3.3 volts that indicates that one of the working conditions of the cpu is not met right so you need to check in order that's like how i showed you a while ago and then you'll see which one of the signals are missing if it's done vcc dsw is not coming and vcc prim underscore 3p3 signal is not coming right so you should check here so once dsw vrme the vs the vcc dsw 3p3 signal is okay then to internally pull up the power button signal so it can receive the power button from the io controller all right so let's go back to the schematic that's my time all right so vcc dsw 3p3 so vcc dsw all right underscore 3p3 all right and there we go and here it is and it is connected to 3 volt underscore dual now normally on a laptop motherboard this is provided by a pwm output right so pwm which is coming from our 3 volt and 5 volt standby regulator right on a laptop on a desktop it's different so let's copy this signal and see where it, it's generated from uh, let's go for the battery see and here's another one vcc dsw 3p3 and it's also powered by 3 volt underscore dual underscore pch all right and that's where 
that's what I have copied, all right? And it's going to a lot of places. Let's go through them one by one, all right? So at least 10 milliseconds delay after the three volt dual is stable. So basically what is this is saying that once this table after once at least within 10 milliseconds this is stable then it's going to get ready to turn the piece the IO to release the RSM reset signal right as you can see it's coming from it's also coming to here right this is after now you plug in the power supply when you plug in the power supply right once the power supply is plugged in on the board right which is here this is the power supply connector the 24 pin right ATX power supply ATX and this is the 24 pin power supply connector all right and this is going to connect this to the board to provide the power right uh, right so this is after you plug it in then this voltage will be generated let's go to the next one all right this is acting as a pull up so that's not it this is pull up all right this is another pull up that's not it this is a pull up which is going to the PCH it's not it it's not it that's not it that's where we're coming from this is all coming to coupling for our filtration it's not it that's not it all right this is going to uh signal name that's not it all right this is a pull up that's not it another pull up here that's not it that's filtration that's not it that's not it all right that's not it that's not it that's pull up okay ah here we are so as you can see three volt dual underscore pc is generated from here as you can see we have five volt sb sb which stands for five volt standby and we have a, a regulator here which is called l1117 or l11 l triple one seven which is a common voltage regulator to turn for most next up to turn on the three volt dual underscore pch right so as you can see it's three legs so let's see if we can find it on the motherboard here i think i located it at the bottom let's go for the schematic the block there the, so we're gonna look for l11 triple seven let's copy that and see if we can find it on the board view paste it's not finding it all right we're going to type in uh sorry my mistake i should have searched for the position number which is nq9 sorry all right nq9 all right here we go oh and it's right here and this is which part okay this is the cpu socket this is the cpch so it's right beside the pch as you can see here right right beside the pch nq9 all right so it's right beside the pch oh the ram slot is blocking it oh here it is here it is here it is so this is the output part this is the pin number one two three and the output right and uh it's right there let me see if i think i had another picture where i took it from uh let me okay so here it is as you can see we have three legs right here so this is the n117 right a very common popular uh, regulator used on most desktop motherboards right and the five volt sb is coming to here and it's going to output three volts right so the five volts so five volt sb is coming to this pin pin and then it's going to get the this is the feedback here are the feedback resistors right and capacitors these are connected to the feed not the feedbacks are these are the adjustments right to adjust the voltage right so if these resistors are abnormal then the voltage of output will be abnormal right and there will be no output or it will go in protect protection mode right so this is the regulator right the n triple one seven right l one one seven all right so let's go back to the schematic so as you can see this three volt dual is produced by pin four of this regulator so pin number one two three right and here it is pin number one pin number two pin number three right so pin number one which is the adjustment as you can see see which is connected to pin number one and two with the capacitor we have two resistors here right and we have three volt dual pch which is generated and it is measuring the output voltage at all times right so this is basically a, an adjustment feedback output right so as you can see we have 301 ohm resistor and we have a 510 ohm resistor right and it is basically monitoring the voltage of the v out right so the v out which is uh done through the calculation 
all right i won't go to the calculation at the moment because of time i'll do that in the next class all right so as you can see 5 volt sb and we have 3 volt dual underscore pch and this 3 volt is generated from this 5 volt sb so we're going to copy this 5 volt sb and see where it's coming from all right it's hard to copy so we're going to type 5 volt all right 5 v s b 5 volt standby and this is going to some pages here and it's going to the io right the io have to detect 3 volt the standby we'll soon get to that all right that's not it that's a pull up that's not it that's not it that's pull up that's not it that's not it that's not it that's not it this is to produce 5 volt dual soon get to that this is where we're coming from that's not it that's not it that's not it okay that's not it ah here is it this is our atx power connector and as you can see here the 5 volt standby is coming from normally it's pin all right so 5 volt sb is coming from normally pin 9 see 5 volt sb and it is going to provide 5 volt sb as you can see here we also have a zener diode that is acting as a protection so as you can see this zener diode one part is connect this part of the zener diode is connected to the uh the anode to the cathode and from the cathode right as you can see this diode now is acting as a a protection this is now becoming a clamping diode you can also call it a transient suppressor diode which is used to protect the, uh, the uh, a circuit from voltage spikes and so forth as you can see here this is acting as a protection from or you can call them anti-static diodes right so this is prevent to try and, this is to prevent anti-static from going back to the board due to interference from the power supply right so this is also acting as a form of a filtration and anti-static and protection through what we call a transient suppressor diode right so this 5 volt is coming from our power supply right and this is normally a purple wire right so the purple wire on the power supply is connected to the is going to come to this pin pin number nine and five volts so you should plug in your power supply right and you measure five volts here i'm going to do that tomorrow practically right so i'm going to uh, explain some key pinouts that you should check right i won't show everything it's a demo but i'm going to show you some key points uh in the, during the maintenance process to check when checking the uh the model the desktop motherboard right so this five volt when you plug in the five the, the power supply this five volt is coming out as you can see we have capacitors here very important right these capacitors can cause all kind of fluctuation if they are not if they are leaking or they are removed right so these capacitors are very important and this is anti-static diodes right we call them anti-static diodes are transient suppressor diodes right and they are used to what protect so for example if there's these voltage uh you should google the you should look up the data sheet for these uh anti-static diodes right what will happen is that let's say for example this has a 5 volt reverse conduction voltage right because it can reverse conduction so that's the beauty of these um zener diodes or we can call them regulated diodes or we can call them clamping diodes they have so many names so what they do they do a reverse conduction so that's if there's an over voltage or, or a spike that ever to occur on this line what will happen is that this voltage will go to this diode this diode will then forward it to this diode what will happen is that this diode now will do a reverse conduction and clamp it and keep it at five volts at all time if it exerts the amount of pressure reverse conduction value then this vote this diode will do a self con uh, self destruct it's like a sacrificial element um element on the board or a sacrificial component sorry right so that is the the, more, the purpose of this to keep it at a voltage and stabilize it and clamp it and to keep it right so this is why it's called anti-static diode or transient suppressor diodes okay so this five volts is going to where we are coming from and this is our atx 24 pin power supply connector as you can see and it is on the motherboard here all right it's right here all right here so this is the connection all right atx all right and it's called atx here which is the position name on the schematic all right so that five volts is where 
5 volt SB is coming from all right and uh, it's coming from where we are coming from let's go back. I think I found it earlier here right so this 5 volts coming from the ATX power supply coming to pin 3 right and it is going to produce 3 volts output at the same time this 3 volt is coming through these feedback resistors and capacitors to provide a constant feedback so it's adjustable so the voltage can be adjusted right so if you look up the data sheet for this um lm l11 l117 you'll get the full information about it and it can act and it can output various amounts of voltages when you have these resistors such so changing the value of these resistors can alter the output voltage of 3 volt you are right so these resistors should not change value if any case that these resistors change value then the output voltage will be abnormal and it can't turn on the system and it can also uh cause other problems because of over voltage there is no over voltage protection on these but they they, they use other uh the, there is a voltage protection we just haven't been, been to that section of the schematic yet so i'm going to show you in future classes right uh so i'm going to get the point to fix i'm going to sketch out My diagram designer, sorry. All right, so let's, uh, all right, so we have your PCH. So we'll go for the VCCRTC. I didn't copy. so that's the power supply name but uh i need to draw the seamless battery connector oh this one is plugged in on the board so i need to draw
right so this is the dual um, or diode Right, we're going to provide us with RTC power for the PCH. Right, so let's call this uh, GA hyphen H one seventy and hyphen Wi Fi. All right, so we have ECC RTC. All right, next we have uh, SRTC reset. This is the capacitor here, and uh, the resistor. Sorry, and I'll just draw the capacitor here. for the delay and its name is called NRTC Here SRTC reset This is also another another delay. we have the clock oh I didn't put the signal in for the uh, this one is in
this crystal which is nx2 position name i have to hurt because i have work i have a lot of work a lot of motherboards to repair now uh, so i have to do this quickly all right we're getting there After that, it's out. This is coming from a um, 5 volt SB. Let me see if I can grab that image.
All right, then this is five volts SB. So let's go for this uh, on the skin only. Okay, yeah. And this one is NQ9. And this one is gonna output three volt dual. I already drawn that. So this one is five volt S standby. Uh, good. So we have no uh, here. Right. These are for the adjustment resistors. Okay, all right, so these are the resistors for adjusting the voltages to add for the voltage adjustment. All right, so I'm gonna steps. I'm gonna add steps now. a fill plus mm, a fill nah let's go for right do this uh, red stroke on off a blue there we go. Alright, so let's get a little smaller. Alright, good. So step one, which is checking here. Alright, and this is step one. Alright, step two, RTC. Yeah, and three. And four. Clock and five right six it's producing Next class, we will continue and finish and for the next demo. Okay, bye.